Welcome again to Mentor Us Live, the only digital platform that connects you to those that are in the industry doing their thing and making change. Tonight we are joined by a special guest who just does it big. He's an entrepreneur within the multimedia industry. He's a director and a producer. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have heard of the Permican Awards, tonight we have the pleasure and privilege of interviewing Mr. Ted Courage Lazaro. Can I just say it in Italian? Lazaro. Lazaro. <laughs> you need to make it. <laughs> I need to make it come out. Exactly. <laughs> Mr. Lazaro, thank you so much for making time and being here tonight. Pleasure, man. Pleasure, man. Thank we, you. For... We've been seeing your work. We've been following it. And uh, you know, it's everywhere you, you get to and anything you do within multimedia, there's a footprint that stays behind. But we want to know, was it always like that? Did, were you born a multimedia fascination, or what happened? Tell us about the early years of your life. Um, OK, I was born in a family of uh, four. Uh, interesting enough, my dad was the one who, I could say, pushed me into multimedia. Uh, I remember early, early days, we're living in the township, Chitungwiza. Everyone knows Chitungwiza. We're living in the township, but the mentality he tried to instill in us was uh, not of the township. So, you know, he was strict, like you wouldn't go out of the gate, you wouldn't play out late, uh, playing with the guys, all that stuff. But I remember very vividly this other time, he came with a very huge camera. He got it at the auction. <laughs> The camera wasn't working, uh, so I said, I think it will work. So for, I would say for years, we played around with it. So I think that was the early years which I could say I fell in love with the whole idea of the camera, because I remember you would take that, uh, even if it wasn't working, you try to imitate as if you're filming something. So I think that planted a seed in me, which uh, later grew into like what we are doing now. Uh, to enter professionally, the early years to enter professionally into the multimedia industry. I remember, I think it was around 2005, 2006, a friend of mine, very close friend, even now we still talk, Munyarad is in Cape Town right now. Uh, we went to a wedding. So I wasn't supposed to be part of the crew, then we just filmed there. Then I got a little money out of it. <laughs> I know it might not be the best motivator, <laughs> but I remember that money was so precious to me, and I said, ah, I think I'm going to, keep pursue, to this thing. pursue this thing. I had no camera, no computer, so I remember I would get a camera from a friend, then I would travel from Shitungiza to Rua just to go and edit. That's like 50Ks. Yeah, that's like 50Ks. And those days, you know, we're not as blessed as we are now where you can drive, you would get, I think it, you needed at least two buses to get to Rua. Then you get there, we do an all-nighter, we edit. So that was uh, the, early, the early years. And I think that's how I fell in love with the industry. And then you later went to study the craft and? Yeah, uh, I got lucky. I, go, I would say I got like, I know God had a purpose for it, but I went to South Africa. And when I went to South Africa, in the community where I was living, there was a theater and film organization, which was run by uh, a Nigerian, Martin Duruji. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago, God rest his soul. But that gave me an opportunity to get exposed to what works in the industry. So you would go from the basics of theater, performance. I know right now if I tell someone, I, I directed a couple of, <laughs> of plays. <laughs> of plays, they were like, ah, really? really? <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think that gave me an opportunity to, I think, hone my craft when it comes to dealing with talent, talent on the other side of the camera. Uh, and also what works in terms of equipment, because we'd go to the market theater in, in Newtown, Johannesburg, we did a play there, and I was just a kid from Zim, and I'm thrown in there, and whenever I went with that guy, he would introduce me, this is my co-director. <laughs> I was very young, I remember, I think I was 20, 22, and every time you would introduce me as a co-director, the guys who were in the industry already, would 
treat you with the respect that's due to a director. And they would expect you to know some of the things, but we, I was learning as I, as I go, as, as I went on here. We always get so excited when we hear the word mentor. I mean, it's needless to say, we're called mentors, <laughs> you know. So tell us, within your, um, your, your, the stages of your development as a multimedia um, practitioner, up to now you've got 11 years experience. Yeah. What are the, who are the people who you met who pushed you even further? Um, I would say, okay, like I told you, uh, the early years, my dad was the one who was always pushing to, to say, ah, let's do this, let's do I even remember uh, sometime he, he went all the way to buy a very good camera because he knew that's something which I was actually now, now doing. So I think he's my biggest mentor. His, his attitude towards work, his, his drive, his passion, uh, his, he can't compare it to anything. But uh, to go back into the industry, the guys who are in the industry who have impacted me a lot, I had the opportunity to, to meet a very good director from South Africa. His name is Eugene Naidu. Uh, he's directed, he directed the FIFA World Cup 2010, the opening, he's the one who directed that. So I had the privilege to, to work with him. And the first time I worked with him, the funny thing, he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't I was, doing anything? I was the one who was, <laughs> doing I was the work. directing a production. Okay. And he was just there. And what I learned from that, when he was later explaining what it means to be a director or a technical director, he watched everything which I was doing. Then he said, okay, A, we went wrong that way. He said we went wrong because he was there. B, we went wrong that way. C, we went wrong to that way. We would have done this this way, that that way, and this that way. And what's important which has stuck with me was when he mentioned the experience we get when we're doing what we do is what helps us to do the next production better. Yeah. So the next production we did uh, he wasn't there, he was a phone call away, and it was a perfect production because he knew we did that era and he knew everything which was on the ground and said, do this that way, do that that way, do that that way, and it worked, it worked very well. So he's another mentor who I've uh, come to respect very much in the industry. Uh, like I mentioned, Martins Duruji, he was a passionate Nigerian. He was once a priest, then he went into theater. He was a very passionate, I've never seen passion is on that man. He was another mentor who took me from my early years. And I think if ever I get into acting and anything, he's the one who, who really, really taught me the ropes when it comes to acting and treating talent who are uh, behind the glass. That's what we say, behind the glass, <laughs> behind the lens. And even your, your passion for teaching other young people um, the, the, the craft within multimedia is evident within your organization, yeah. Shabak Entertainment. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Shabak. Um, Shabak Entertainment, it's a company we officially, we say we established it in uh, 2012, but it was a passion which was uh, brewing uh, from all the time I was working with within the different organization I have been blessed to be part of. Uh, I remember one day, I, okay, I, I come from a very big church, and I'm a pastor's kid. A, uh, a PK. I'm a PK. So uh, I, I happen to be one of the eldest PKs in, in the organization. So by default, all the younglings <laughs> looked up to me. So I grew very close to them, and... I remember an incident when I was listening to music. I was very passionate about hip hop, uh, but I had been uh, turned from a, a soul to a poor into Christian hip hop. I had met very good people in the industry and who had really showed me that you can have that uh, in the Christian dom, but still enjoy it, the quality is still the same. And when I was with these young PKs, like you have said, they were listening to your regular, secular, good hip hop. <laughs> I, I mean good in terms of production, but we know the content is, is, is something else. So that's what they were listening to. So my heart bled when, when I saw them. I said, hey, what can be done to, to alleviate this? To say, what's the alternative to them listening to this stuff which is 
contaminating their spirit, which is contaminating their morals. That's when I think the, the hunger for Shabak entertainment came about. And I remember the first thing we were calling it Shabak entertainment loud about Christ. Because we wanted to bring an alternative to secular, which is also anointed, which is also uh, full, of, full of all the, the base they like, all the whatever is trending. Not to confirm to the world, but to give them a better product. And uh, we've also noticed that, look, you are a producer. Is this, is this when your producer title came up, or you had always been a producer? Uh, I'm not a music producer. Okay. I, I've, 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 a I've, content producer. Yeah, content producer. Okay. Yeah, but I have been part of a couple of songs, so you could say Yeah, producer, music producer. But I wouldn't say music <laughs> producer. But uh, my producer comes from producing film, producing productions. Yeah, making sure productions go. But obviously within the entertainment sector, Shabak, um, my point that I want to drive home yeah. is this. We've got so many Christian musicians yeah. who've had to drop their title Christian in order to, I don't want to use the word conform, but to be accepted, <laughs> you know. Why, why is that? Why is it that the Christian community does not support the Christian artists that, and it forces them to drop the title to be accepted. Hey, that's a dangerous topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's look at it this way. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says, ye are the light, right? Uh, from the way I see it, because as an organization, we, we, we have had to work with organizations which are not necessarily Christian. Even though our founding principles are Christian, we wouldn't go out into the industry labeling our company as a Christian company. So I think we're also, uh, I don't want to say big teams <laughs> to the same, yeah. but here's how we, I don't want to say justify, but here's how I'll say God uh, revealed it to me. If you're a light, whether you are in a beer hall, you're still a light. Whether you are in the street, you're still a light. So the elements which uh, you are around, don't need to change what you are. If you are a light, you are there to shine a light. If you are in a scenario where there's a lot of secular artists or secular musicians, what you are there for is for you to shine a light. So even though they might not take you as a Christian musician, if you're just a musician, they will say, why is that guy different? they will need to see why you are still a light. Be not ye conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed. That's another issue of transformation, but the conforming to the world part, we can't be conformed to the world. We have to remain the light. If you're the light, we are the light. So I feel a lot of artists have been put under pressure to drop the tag Christian because it closes some doors. There are some conversations which you can't even have just because you have put the tag Christian up front. But exactly. <laughs> yeah. But we still need to live up to the Christ we are calling ourselves Christians, even if we're dropping the tag. It's not about just dropping the tag. Some drop the tag and drop the morals and drop, the drop everything. everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I don't mind you dropping the tag, Christian, uh, Christian musician, Christian entrepreneur. I don't mind you dropping the term Christian, but the fruit, exactly the foundation and the fruit, we still need to say the fruit your love, because that's how we we'll know them. We we'll, we'll know them by their fruit, so we we'll still need to see the fruit. Okay, let's, let's assume that, look, they've dropped the title, but uh, I've, I've, I've kept my ear on the ground a lot of times, especially when it comes to such events, yeah. uh, Christian events, Christian musicians as well. They complain that the Christian folk don't follow the events that a Christian holds or the type of music and concerts. Why is it that there's no support? Um... I would like to, to, uh, to, to attempt to answer that from a different perspective. I've, I've had three shows where we filled a stadium, Christian shows. And on all those Christian shows, uh, I remember we didn't advertise using a secular artist. We advertised using uh, Christian names, the Christian musicians. So I think sometimes as Christians, we offer people mediocre stuff, and we expect people to accept our mediocrity just because it's Christian, yeah. So we, what I have uh, told myself, or what I have uh, set out to do is to say, if I'm going to do anything, it doesn't have to be mediocre. If it's awards, you mentioned Pemican Awards. 
we are getting into the fourth year now doing the Pemmican Awards. And they've been consistent in terms of quality, in terms of uh, the people who come. We've filled the house each and every time. We're talking about 15,000 Christians attending a Gospel Awards show. I was at the other awards, I won't say, I won't <laughs> okay. mention. Uh, yeah. I, there were not as many people there. Yeah. So to say Christians, uh, quality, you can't argue with quality. Get quality stuff, get quality production, people will be attracted to that. People are not attracted to mediocrity. They are attracted to quality. Yeah. So as Christians, we, we have a lot of mediocre stuff. We feel if you just get in the studio, if you say, Jesus, I need to accept that. My brother, no. It's not the sinner's prayer. No, it's <laughs> not the sinner's prayer. <laughs> yeah. Who produced it? Who mixed it? How is the mixing? How is the mastering? If it's a video, who shot it? How is the lighting? Like you see, there are lights. If there were no lights, I probably might say, ah, guys, age. I would have made an excuse by now to say, I. But you can see it's a quality product which is being created. So if it's a quality product, people will come. And that's what we need to do as Christians. Let's give people quality. Quality is never ignored. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whilst we're still on this fact, I'm not bombarding any Christians, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yes, let's take some water for this one. <laughs> You know, my, my next point is this. You, you've, you've spoken about several facets. Let's say, for example, this particular set. Yeah. Lighting, sound, the visuals, and the decor. Yeah. Taking from an example you said prior, that you said you went to a wedding, you discovered that, okay, this is a big hit. Yeah. I can make money from it. Yeah. Are we also, could we also say that within the industry, that everyone wants to do everything? If someone, <laughs> if someone sees good lighting yeah. and a good sound, they want to go by their own lights, their own sound. Yeah. And does that also contribute to the lack of quality within? Unfortunately, that's not just a Christian uh, problem. Now, that's an industry problem. Like, the multimedia industry is seriously suffering from that, especially right here in Zimbabwe. Uh, you mentioned a good example that I come to your production, I see the lights you have, I can see the name there, I just take the name, and I order that specific uh, light so that next time I don't come to you I don't hire from you. I just go and get my own stuff. That's the, the, the disease or the virus that's killing the industry. Because the fact that you've got these lights here, I know the guys can't see them, but the fact that you've got, there's a thought process which is there in putting these lights together. Someone thought about how I'm going to put this light there, that light there, and that light there. There's a thought process behind that. And normally someone goes to school for that, you, you become a lighting specialist. And when you just come and take whatever you see here, we, without that specialist background or without the due thought process which is behind that, that's how the industry dies now, because you just go and duplicate something which you don't know why it's there. And the next thing you do, you do another production, it's different from this production. But you still have got this, the same stuff which you got. And it doesn't work for that production. So you might have a, a fluke to say one production works because it's similar to this one. But then the next production doesn't work, the next production doesn't work. And you start doing mediocre production from that point on. So people need to specialize, that's what I feel. Yeah. People, let, let us specialize in the industry. The multi-industry is full of a lot of roles which someone can embark on. You can do lights. Someone can just be a producer and just come and make sure everything is done. Someone can just direct. But we rarely have people who are specializing right now. People want to capitalize. Maybe it's because the industry doesn't have a lot of money, but someone wants the money for lights, someone wants the money for sound. They want, and they want everything. At the end of the day, the product is suffering. You can count on your hand how many movies we have had successfully. Yeah, but I can tell you how many companies have come from those movies. After they finish that movie, they see, ah, that's possible, that's possible. Then they all branch out. They start different companies. They should have stayed together, go on to the next production, go on to the next production. Yeah. Speaking of productions, you, about four years ago, yeah. you launched the Pemmican Awards. Yes. What was your intention with that? Um, okay, the Pemmican Awards were, were birthed out of the... Okay, the, the driving force, I'll say my driving force, was for an industry to see how we can do something that's world standard. Uh, due to the connections I had, I had been exposed to high quality productions. 
I was at the center of The Voice, The Voice Nigeria, The Voice South Africa, and they would treat you as an equal, because for them it's simple, that's how they're doing it. Then I, I also got exposed to an international uh, production, which was even way better than the South African production I had seen. So I knew it can be done. So the first year we did it, we just said, we want to give a high quality show. And we did a lot of errors. I remember the show was almost six to eight hours. Wow. Because we invited almost 52 artists. Wow. <laughs> and everyone wanted to perform. <laughs> so the show ended around, around, I think it was around midnight. 12. <laughs> yeah, midnight, like, true story. That's the longest Sulu, award ceremony I've Sulu ever heard. too was supposed to perform. Then he canceled. Then someone told him, hey, the show is on fire. Then he just came and went straight on stage. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you. The days of small beginnings. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But the, it, was, it was amazing how we could bring all the, It was a low budget production. We didn't have enough. We just had the passion to do it. And we put together a show which people talked about. And they're still talking about it. And from that year, we've been stepping it up, stepping it up, and stepping it up. You're said to be a risk taker and a, cre and a heavy creative. <laughs> what, what, what distinguishes your organization or your company yeah. with all these other ones in the country right now? Impossible is nothing. Okay. Yeah. We, 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 yeah, we, we believe, okay, our mantra right now, we say, let's grow big together. The, the word big being very bold. Yeah. So we believe nothing can be done. Nothing. If we don't do it today, we'll do it tomorrow. And if we can't do it tomorrow, we'll do it the other day. And rest assured, if we set out to do it, we'll do it. Yeah. We thrive ourselves and say from concept to concept, we are with you. So from the inception of the concept to the final concept, we are with you and we always try to go big. And one of the things about growing a business, obviously, is trying to share and pour out your vision as well as your passion yeah. into those that work with you. Yeah. How have you tackled that and how have you instilled all that you have inside of yeah. you into your employees? Um, do, do you know what's, what's, been, what's been the driving force? If, if you have a lot of passion, it's easy for you to get caught up with people who don't have that, that drive. But God has been good, I'll be honest. Uh, he has linked me up with some amazing young, young people. Sometimes I don't even know where they come from. Some okay. end up staying at my place. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where these guys come from. I remember our producer, our producer right now, Spirit Fingers, he, we, uh, big hits on, on, on radio. Uh, he, I didn't know him, but my cousin knew him. Then he came and I said, guys, I think we need to put this album together. And the guy said, yeah, let's do it. And we've been doing it from that day. <laughs> so I think God is a way of bringing the right people at the right time. And obviously, you might lose people along the way, but I know God always has a plan to bring you the right people at the right time. And sometimes we would, we would go without even resources to say, uh, where is the recording location? Sometimes we would argue with my wife, we're recording at the house. Uh, say, ah, baby, this room is now a studio. I say, what? <laughs> okay, we are going to put this, this. And she said, oh. So it's been also good to have a, an understanding wife because it makes it easier. Otherwise, hey, the dream would have long, <laughs> long died, man. But we, we have been blessed to, to be close to people like that. Mm. At least now I know that you've got an extra room and for all those that want a place to stay. <laughs> We're just going to take a short break and uh, we'll be back on Mentorous Live with Ted Lazaro in a few minutes. Welcome back to Mentor Us Live, and tonight we are joined by the king of creatives, a man with a big heart, a big vision, and apparently a big house. <laughs> Mr. Lazar, yes, I was watching on your online platform, you created something that was rather unique. I mean, after I watched that, I wanted to do it myself. <laughs> but it just described the level of innovation that you and your organization run the online Facebook concert. Yes. 
Tell us about your craft in terms of innovation. Um, this industry is constantly changing. And if you, if, if you can't uh, change and adapt, uh, you stay behind. The industry will literally just leave you there and the following day you're not relevant. So we always are trying to find ways of how we can be relevant. That's how the, the Facebook Live concert uh, came, came into action. Because people were used to live DVDs. I remember the first time we did live DVD, Makanaka Jesu, with UFIC. Yes. People started doing, there were live DVDs Everybody everywhere. wanted to do it. <laughs> Everyone was doing it. So I felt it was a season where the, the core message or the core reason why we we, st we need to be innovative and we need to stay current is people are connecting differently. People are now living in their palms. They have a phone in their palms. So how d the question was, how are we going to connect to people who are constantly on their, on their they are not going to buy a DVD and put a DVD which you took months to prepare for. So I just came to the studio, I said, guys, we are doing a Facebook Live concert. They said, what is that? <laughs> I said, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to my tennis court. And in my tennis court, we're going to put lights. Uh, I'm going to put a snooker table there. So we are keeping it casual. So even during your performance, you're just going to be talking to the people. And we went out and we did that. And it's amazing because uh, we had a team which just said, let's do it. Yeah. So innovation, I think, also needs support. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to have a team which can come and support uh, the dream and make it happen. And tell me, um, I, I love specifics. How do you create your ideas? Maybe someone out there has had the passion yeah. to do something, but they get a mind block. Yeah. How do you create or think up your innovation? Uh, I think you, you need to be exposed. Uh, a lot of things which I did when I was in the Zimbabwe arena were to a certain standard, to a certain quality. I could only do stuff on a program. I don't know if you remember Nero. Yes, I remember yes, up yes. To Nero oh, that was... Yeah, I don't know yeah. where it is now. Ancient, yeah. Eh? But for me, that was the ceiling because okay. that's what I was exposed to. So the first time I went to South Africa, I was doing opera. I don't know if you even believe this. <laughs> I was doing classical music. With you, Chitungi's arm on the singer. You were singing? Yes. You I were was, a singer? Yes, I was singing. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was doing all this, don't make me sing, but, <laughs> but it expanded my scope. Because yeah. uh, I went there, it was lights, camera, action, it was on SABC. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So automatically it expanded my, my scope, the way I was thinking. So the amount of exposure you get is how... It's, it's the amount of stuff which you get, even creatively, and that affects uh, your thought process. There is no way you can think of a 30 by 20 meter stage if you've never seen something like that. Yeah, yeah. It can happen, uh, there are flukes and there are people who can come up with that God inspired, but most of the time, what you expose yourself to, that's what gives you inspiration. So I watch a lot of stuff. I watch shows which are done by secular artists. I watch shows which are done by Christian artists. I watch a lot of TV. I, I rarely sleep before 12. I don't know if it's good, but I think it has helped uh, by creativity. It has helped the thought process because it's like a palette. It's a palette which is a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff which you're putting there because of you're exposing yourself to this, that, that. So wherever you want to get a creative uh, concept, you're taking from your palette. You're not taking it from anything else. It's not something you just pick from the air, but it's from what you have exposed yourself to. Okay. And with your experience, what you're saying now, it shows that you have quite some time doing a lot of things. Some things probably have failed. Yeah. I'm, yeah, very, <laughs> I'm, very, con I'm very interested in finding out yeah. your lowest moment, a point which nearly crushed any hope of becoming who you are today. How did you overcome that? <laughs> lowest, lowest moment. Uh, I've always had music attached to my life. I, I'll, I've, I've written a couple of songs. They're not popular, but I've... <laughs> no, they're personal. <laughs> I, I, and I've never recorded any of them in the studio. But I remember there was a time when I went... The first time I went to South Africa, you remember it was like we're economic refugees. 
we were running away from a lot of stuff that was happening in, in Zim. So the first time I went to South Africa it was when a certain pastor had invited me to say, ah, come teach my, I was a keyboard player, come teach my, <laughs> my choir, uh, stuff like that. But the expectation was I'm leaving Zimbabwe, I'm going to a place which is wow. Yeah, so when I got there, it was like, it was lower than the way I was, I was staying. So it was, it was a huge shock. And um, I would say that was my lowest uh, point in terms, of, uh, in terms of stuff I had that time. Because there was no way I was going home with nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was also one of the times where I think I grew closer to God because there are times where you just have to believe. And with, with time, things started changing. And that's how I ended up going even to TKO, uh, Telescope and the, the theater organization. But I would say that was one of the lowest times because my expectations were very high. So uh, what the reality uh, hit me like really, really hard. <laughs> because the expectations were too, too high. And I believe that uh, within the audience, yeah. there are entrepreneurs, there are artists, there are wannabe producers, yeah. there are producers as well. But um, ideally what they would also would love to know is things they should look out for, or rather how they can upgrade themselves yeah. and create a holistic industry. What advice would you give to them? Uh, there is nothing which, which, which can be substituted for uh, just raw knowledge. Let's get out there and get as much information as we can in the craft you want to be a part of. This industry is huge, and if you specialize, we need people who are going to specialize. If it's lights, make sure you specialize in that. And the industry is going to expand. Uh, we, we are in a, a, a day and age where things are changing, things are transforming, and it's going to come a time where that skill is going to be very, very uh, needed. And yeah, I think let's get as much information as we can and let's be passionate about it. Don't do it if you're not passionate about it. Let passion drive you. And passion, let it be backed by tangible knowledge, which you can get if it's school, let's get it. Right now the internet is awash with information which is useful uh, to, to someone who's getting into this craft. Wow, thank you so, so much. Eh? I believe for the audience, they have learned and have understood. Um, I was actually planning to buy lights, cameras, and becoming everything, one organization. <laughs> but as, if you, as you've heard from uh, Ted Lazaro, who is a, the biggest producer currently within the digital uh, TV with uh, viewership with Christ TV. Christ TV is a viewership over 5 million, uh, and we're also transmitting and broadcasting on the World Wide Web, so it's worldwide. Christ TV is sub-Saharan and parts of Europe, uh, sub-Saharan Africa, but we are also worldwide on the World Wide Web. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's people who still say that. W w or W3, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lazaro, for yeah. spending time with us today. Yeah. We are very grateful. We are definitely going to be following up and uh, growing as you grow. Thank you. Learning and seeing the things you then develop. Because I believe that uh, with Shabak Entertainment, the uh, grounds you're going to break and it's going to benefit so many, I mean thousands and millions of people out there. We, we hope so, we hope so. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Mentor Us Live and uh, I believe that you have been impacted, your life has been changed and I hope as you are being inspired, you inspire someone else. Share this uh, episode with all your friends and family because if you've gained, make someone else gain. Thank you so much. Let's meet again next time.